Thanks for tuning in to the Catch Podcast. Brought to you by Dark Horse Tackle. The best American small business baits you've never heard of, stocked in a monthly box. Use promo code the Catch 5 off and save $5 off your first monthly subscription to the Weekend Warrior Box. Here are your hosts, Matt Souders and Brad Hicks. I debated saying the nerds and virgins thing again because I got like three messages. <laughs> you should. Everybody was like, "Dude, that was hilarious. You should do it. Do it more often." Dude, that's how we start every show from now on. It just is what it is. No matter if you say it or I say it, that's how we're starting it. No, oh, uh, Dave Erky, he made a meme of me. <laughs> I sent it to Matt today, and it said, oh, "Greetings, man. nerds and virgins," and then it had me like holding my. I had a, in the picture that was not edited before i was holding the s'mores so he put like a big giant dildo mm -hmm. over the s'more mm -hmm. stick that i was holding and it said greetings nerds and virgins <laughs> it was hilarious it was awesome <laughs> it was i was like damn you <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's going on buddy not much dude just you know i was kind of hurrying to get ready for tonight but just got done eating right before i jumped on and yeah well, that's fun. You had a great weekend fishing wise. Oh, dude, it was awesome. Uh, fished with Justin Saturday. We did a float. It was crazy. So Sunday morning, no clouds in the sky, sunny. Two hours later, it got cloudy. A couple hours later, it started misting. A couple hours later, it started downpouring. And then like an hour later, it started misting again. So we were soaking wet. And it was windy. You would have you would have been cussing the whole time, Matt. It was like 20 you're talking about on wind. on Sunday, Saturday. Oh, on the river, uh, there was white caps on the river. Yeah, but on the river, I'm fine with wind. I don't know why. Like I've been out there on days to where, like I went out by myself last uh, <clears throat> earlier this season out to east, mm -hmm. and it was white cap, and that's real deep right there. Like if the wind's picking up, like you could be on a boat rocking up and down. And even on the P-127s, that's what I took out. It's the only time I've taken it out this year. Uh, I was fine. I mean, on the river, for whatever reason, I'm fine. It's just when I'm on big open water and I keep getting pushed into the bank, I just get ticked off. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't I don't know. It's just me. But since flipping the boat and holding myself very, you know, keeping my, my composure, I feel yeah. like I'm going to be fine. Like I'll just deal with it and move on. Cause that's literally what I was thinking the whole time. And that sucked. So, well, that, that's, a, that's a good episode that we're going to have coming up, hopefully within the next month. So we're going to have another Bassmaster guy on to talk about mindset of fishing. It's going to be fun, but I'm about it. I ended up catching two. Yeah. Two 19s Saturday on the trace, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And Told you. yeah, finally, and I, I've just been catching nothing but little fish on it, and then I finally bust Dude, two once big you catch ones a, on it. it was yeah, awesome. it's a whole different fight. Like mm -hmm. when I caught that 19 and a half on the trace that one trip, dude, it was a whole different fight. It just, it's so much better. And you can't just horse them in either because it, it just, there's so much resistance on that bait and that fish. It's just like, yep. oh my gosh, dude. You're scared the whole time. Yeah, I, I was recording. You'll hear it in the video. Don't come off. Don't come off. Don't come off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was awesome. Caught it. A uh, big red horse sucker, a big Again. 27 inch red horse sucker. It's bigger than your last one. Yep. Uh, come to find out, somebody messaged me and said, You should have weighed that thing. That might have been close to the Ohio record because the Ohio record's 11 pounds. And I'm like, I replied back. I was like, I don't know if I want to be known as the guy that catches a record trash fish, <laughs> the king of the trash fish, Brad Hicks. <laughs> But yeah, that was our trip Saturday. It was a good one. Um, Sunday, I went up north with Chris Yauk, and it was a smally sleigh fest on the reservoir, man. I ended up catching another 19 on Jackhammer and Chatterspike. And oh, so it was windy there too, you know, over in that very back corner where it gets real bad windy. Yep. I was sitting on that spot, pointed towards the wind, had my motor going just right to where I was sitting in the spot. 
I fought another 16 inch smallmouth. I caught him like 30 feet of water and these waves were just crashing me, dude. It was complete chaos. Pushed me up against the bank when I was trying to like unhook it and everything. And there's water just coming <laughs> over the deck of the kayak. I was getting drenched, but that is a place that you can legitimately, oh, like I've been on some big water with, with the RVR and even my RS last year and the P127. That is a place for as small as it is, because it's only a mile wide. Mm-hmm. As small as it is, it's one of the most dangerous places I've been on with a small boat. Yeah. It just nuts, is. Dude. Like Dale Hollow, we've been out there during thunderstorms. Brad almost got murdered by uh, the Lord himself with some lightning. And it pouring, going crazy, and it was fine. That place, a whole different ball game. It's like being on Erie. It's rough. It, it was nuts. Like the, the, the waves, that's probably they were crashing the bank harder than I've ever seen it. Yeah. And it wasn't even like super windy. It was just 10 miles sustained wind, but we were at the uh, opposite end from which way it was coming from. So, well, yeah, you were getting the end result of all of it. Yeah. But dude, like complete chaos, just being knocked up against that bank. I I told Chris, I was like, that was chaos, but that was freaking awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's sick. I wasn't um, even planning on going Sunday either, but he's like texting me. He's like, I think you should come, come with me. I almost said the name of the place. <laughs> we would have had it bleep it. Yeah. Uh, but no, that's awesome, dude. I didn't get a chance to fish this weekend. Um, Sunday I had some family stuff I had to do and then I had to work Saturday, but I do have a little unboxing real quick before we jump into this, the replacing of the Bantam. And this comes all the way from our good friend, YG Japan on eBay for the, 47,000 people who've messaged me asking where I buy all my JDM reels. That's where. Uh, so it is. So I'm replacing a Bantam. And I thought, you know what? Get a reel you want. Because you didn't die. Don't just replace it. Which the Bantam's <laughs> a great reel, people. A fantastic reel. One of the best ever used. But I was like, you know what? Why not? I work a lot. So I got a Calcutta Conquest DC-100. I wanted one of these for a long time. It's the first one I've ever had. Um, Is that the gold one? Uh, no, they're silver. Okay. So it comes with all your stuff that I can't understand. Uh, <laughs> more stuff I can't understand. Good old Shimano gear oil. The best in the biz. Very nice case for how much I'm paying for it. It should come with it. I'm ready to there see we this. go. Oh yeah, that's cool, dude. It's so sick. It's like the it old, is. old. It's like an uh, old school looking bait caster. It is, dude. It's super. I mean, it's ridiculously smooth, which it should be. Um, dude, it's just awesome. So it is a hundred spool, so it's a little bit smaller than I'm kind of used to. But I, I think that'll be fine. Gosh, that thing just runs. But there we go. Calcutta Conquest 100 DC. Can't wait to try it. Yeah, so this has it. Unlike everything else, it's got so it's one for the brakes. One, two, three, four, and W. And W means wind. So when you put it on the W, you apparently and I watched a video. You can throw this bad boy into like ten mile per hour sustained wind right in your face, and it will be fine. And you'll get the same amount of casting that you normally would because how the how the brakes and everything work in it. So that's sweet, dude. That is sick. I don't even know how to open the side panel, but that's dope. <laughs> Read the instructions. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. Oh, man. That's cool, dude. I'm pumped. But, yeah, so there's your little unboxing of the week. This is what I replaced the Bantam with because I've had three people ask me what I was going to replace it with, and this is it. Well, there we go. Uh, let's get into the show, dude. Um, I'm excited for this one. We had to get Josh Shrinko back on the show. because oh, yeah. He's a Bassmaster champion now, and it's freaking sweet. So, what's Sorry up, dude? Sorry if you guys can't see me. I'm just hiding behind <laughs> this freaking trophy, dude. <laughs> that's so freaking cool. Dude, that's Pretty awesome. Sick, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the money, I could give a crap what else about, dude. But this freaking trophy Heck yeah, sick as hell. Yeah. Heck yeah. So, so yeah. Pretty pumped so, about it. You, you up, are boys? tied... You're tied with Drew Gregory now for most appearances on the podcast. <laughs> All right. I, I'll take that. That's pretty sick. Uh, you guys um, definitely enjoy your podcast. You guys have 
Second favorite next to Smalley Talk. So Oh man. <laughs> you got well Smalley Talk's my favorite, so Yeah, I was about to say that's 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 always on repeat. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, dude, we need to do a collab episode sometime. That'd be pretty fun, actually. That might get a little out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the best kind of hand to if, get is out of hand. Yeah, yes. if, if I'm on another <laughs> podcast where family and mothers don't listen to it. I'll probably mm-hmm. unleash a little bit. Yes, yeah. let's do yep. that. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> so what's up, boys? I'm oh, talking in a much, while. Man. I know it's. I know you got you went and went off and won a Bassmaster, and then you're like, I don't need to talk to those losers anymore. So. <laughs> Definitely not the case. <laughs> I've been on a couple podcasts. I was on KBN uh, earlier. It was like the next that next Monday or Tuesday or whatever, and yep. then. I was on some other podcasts I honestly hadn't even heard of before, um, which, well, you know. What was it? Um, there was one called The Bass Cast. Oh, yeah. That? Yeah. I followed yeah. them on Instagram. And then, um, who else was I on? I was on Jimmy Skinner's show, but he wasn't actually on the show, so. Yeah, it was you and um, Gerald and, uh, uh. Russ. Yeah, Russ. Russ. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which, that, that was a good time, so. Um, and then I'm going to be on a Bassmaster, like the Bassmaster official podcast, I think sometime later this week. And then, really? Yeah. And then that's that cool. beers, kayak and bass. Who's that? Do you oh, that's Armando. That? Armando. Yeah. I'm going to be on his, I think tomorrow. Something that's like cool. That, so. Yeah. Th- I listen to, I've listened to every, ep- or every podcast you've been on except for that Basscast one, but yeah, yeah. That one was real short, but, um, yeah, man. You know, doing the media rounds, you know, famous. So I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get around the podcast circus. So you got, um, you got to try to get on uh, Dave Mercer's podcast. That'd be freaking sweet. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I was on his, gosh. um, his page when I caught that orange smallmouth, and that is cool. He, yeah, he like did a video like this week in bass fishing or whatever he does, and he like pronounced my name wrong, and I gave him shit about it, and he. Uh, <laughs> He was like, "Sorry, dude." <laughs> um, That's hilarious. But yeah, dude, it feels it feels weird. Like I'm I'm sort of a personality in the fishing world, but I'm not like known as like some tournament guy or whatever. So it's I felt definitely out of place at that the award ceremonies. A lot of guys in that room that you know are doing that all. The, even the guys that don't necessarily win, they're just like that's they're just used to that environment. Yeah. Um, so it was. It was weird, dude. I I knew I had an inkling I had won after last after day two because I like so the leaderboard shuts off, so you don't nothing's for sure. But I had like a three inch lead on Russ, so it's kind of like yeah, I don't I don't think he's catching me. So I like went back to the house and took a shower and stuff and went to the wards and drew drew. I stayed in the house with Drew Drew Gregory and Jeff Little and a bunch of other guys that. Um, I had never met before. They're all super cool guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, I was like showering. He's like, dude, he's like, how's it feel to win a tournament? And I'm like, dude, don't jinx me, bro. We haven't got the trophy yet. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Russ comes out, gets the 22 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But that's what I was thinking. I was like, I, I I was pretty, I was pretty certain at that point. Um, You know, but I got, I got psyched out at a, it was when Hobie used to do those satellite events mm-hmm. and they did one on white river. I don't mm-hmm. I remember. Is that. that the year you fish it, Brad? No, I, I fished the IKA event in two, okay. 2020. Yeah. They did the IKA would ran like in conjunction with that tournament. Yeah. That was, was the like, year before. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was like a hundred and 103 guys or something fishing it. And like, dude, I was absolutely for sure. I'd won that that year. I was on him, dude. I was crushing him in the morning and I was like upgrading, upgrading, upgrading. And I was like hundred percent sure I'd won that tournament. When I called my wife on the way to the wards, <laughs> I was like, meet me there. I won this thing and we get there and, uh, I, I ended up getting second. Um, but the dude that won it ended up, he like, dude, it was one of those days for me. I would, I'd caught so many 16 inch fish. It was like crazy. Like I was upgrading by like half inches, you know, like all day. This dude had a 13 incher on his board until 10 minutes left in the tournament. 
Jeez. and caught like an 18. He said he took the picture with like a minute left, like an upgraded five inches and beat me by Who like, he only beat me by like a half an inch. Uh, it was Cole Garland. I don't know if you guys know. Oh, that. yeah, I know the name. But yeah, he. I mean, he's a stick for sure, but like he was fishing in an area where you weren't going to catch as many fish as I, like I was smoking them all day. But anyways, yeah. I, my lesson learned that time. I was like, okay, I'm never going to like think that I won something until they actually say my name. So yeah. Uh, yeah. That would suck. I sweated out that whole, that Bassmasters uh, award ceremony was literally like an hour and a half long. It was torture, dude. I was yeah. I was, like, I was going to ask you about that. So what, what, what's it like sitting there waiting? And then what's it like when they're calling your name? And then what's it like when you, they actually pronounce you that you want it? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it so it's in like a hotel lobby, you know, like a conference room or whatever. And there wasn't a ton of people. I mean, there was probably 50 people or so in that room. So it wasn't like super crowded, but they had the live stream going. And Steve, Steve's a good dude. I've gotten to know him through this whole thing. And he runs a really, really solid tournament trail. Like for a kayak tournament trail, they make you feel really special and you mm -hmm. know, it's the Bassmaster name. So, like, mm -hmm. just that, you know, just that by itself. If I could have picked to win any, literally any national tournament, dude, this would have probably been the top of my list. Susquehanna River, Bassmasters. Like, yep. it's how cool. Like, it doesn't get much oh, cooler yeah. than that. Mike Iaconelli's fishing it. You know, Greg De Palma's fishing it. You got, like, legit pros. And then all the who's who in the kayak world's fishing it. It was cool, man. I mean, it was... Um, yeah, it, you know, I think the kayak thing is, a, you know, not even close to where the boat thing is at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But their production value for being a kayak tournament was very, very high. And uh, it was cool, man. It was, yeah, I, I'll never forget it. That never, oh, it's something I'll just like, you know, I'll remember for the rest of my life. And hopefully it's not the only big tournament I win, but even if I would never win another one, dude, like the experience, even just this first one, you know, mm -hmm. even if I do one more, like the first one is just like very special. So but it's super cool. Look, look at it this way. There's only five people that win one every year. So you're in a pretty yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Which, you know, I expected if you guys listen to my uh, tournament diary, where I'm like talking before the tournament, like you could tell, like I thought I was going to do well. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't like I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to just go out here. And, you know, I actually had a good game plan going in. I was on fish and practice. But like, dude, I have done that a lot. Like I've gone in and, you know, so I kind of expected to do well. Like I expected to go in. And once it got to the morning of the tournament, though, I was like, I could win this thing because I knew my spot had big fish. Mm -hmm. And when I, I know I knew it had big fish and I was like fairly certain they weren't going anywhere. Like, and when you kind of have a area like that, it's like just a matter of catching them. But, but yeah, it was, it was cool. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that is sick. Yeah. Um, so like, <sighs> I don't. I know how I would probably react when they announce me as the winner. Like, what? What did you want to do? Did you want to like freaking just scream or something? <laughs> like, I know I, I would have just been like, I don't even I know. I would have done it. Like, I don't. Care. <laughs> like, I would just so, start screaming. Let out a big woo or something. Yeah, I was nervous. <laughs> That's not my style. Is not to do the woo thing, but I was. I uh, I was gonna go. <laughs> The only thing that I didn't do that I, because I knew is on a live stream. So it's like, and yeah. this is Bassmasters. I'm like, I don't want to go up there and make a fool of myself. Um, <laughs> but like right before I got off stage, I was going to be like, this one's for Wet Boy Nation. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> great. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like stopped myself. I told my wife. I was like, yeah, I thought about doing that. She was like, oh god, thank God. <laughs> uh, you, you know the uh, you know the uh, episode of The Office where uh, Michael Scott goes to the convention center and they're they're like, don't do the twirl. He's like, I'm gonna do the twirl. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what, That's what I in my head. Yeah, I was I was very close to, but I mean, it was one of those things. Like, I just uh, 
you know, it was the biggest, the biggest, like I've, I've gotten awards over the years for various things and won tournaments and stuff, but like that was by far the biggest bass fish tournament I've ever won. And I was just like, I was just trying to enjoy the moment, mm. you know, I was trying to enjoy it. I was trying to just like soak it in and, you know, re- try to remember it and call the people that were, you know, I called my dad, actually my dad called me like right after the wars were over and he was like dude my dad was all like choked up and like you know it, i mean i fished with my dad since i've been a little mm-hmm. like squirt man like i it, he's the one who t- taught me to fish and you know i've sort of went a different direction we used to fish bass boat tournaments growing up and um now he kayak fishes with me i've got him into smallmouth fishing uh, but he's like, dude, I can't believe you beat Mike Iaconelli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, that has to be one of the coolest moments, though. Like, Oh, yeah. I was yeah. going to ask, how's it feel beating, like, a, a certifiable pro? I was it's like, not like, you know. I was like, I didn't just beat him, dude. I freaking just smashed Mike Iaconelli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> yep. uh, I, I told my dad, I was like, yeah, I did. But, like, this is, I was like, he's on my turf. Like, this yeah. is. Yeah. The Susquehanna, like, that's my, like, specialty. Like, this isn't mm-hmm. some, you know, reservoir. Like, this is this is what I do. Like, this is I go out and I do, I fish rivers. Like, this is what I spend all my time doing for smallmouth. And, like, there's not a single cooler, more, like, appropriate river for me to have one on uh, mm-hmm. than the Susquehanna. So, I was telling you boys before the pod that you should make it a point to get out there it's everything that you could imagine and more so yeah we usually go to Dale hollow every year but i we're we're all talking about susky next year yeah i don't i don't know if the old uh, i mean everyone who's listened to the show for any period of time knows i kind of hope Dale hollow like dries up but uh <laughs> yeah i think i, think I love Dale hollow, man yeah i mean i do the first day i'm there and then i hate it because I can catch fish anywhere else in the world, but I can't catch fish at Dale Hollow. It's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid lake. Susky, dude, is like, oof, I can't even say enough things about it. You, There will be no, at no point on the Susky will you be like, I want to be anywhere else in the world. Like, it's mm-hmm. that cool. It's that good. Even when you're not catching fish, just the, like, scenery and the just, like, I mean, dude, it's it's such a cool place. Like, yeah. such a cool place. Uh, highly recommend it. So. so, lay it out for us. What what what's it like? What do you what what should somebody expect going into it? Uh, it's big. I mean, the cool thing about the Susky that I, I think people don't quite understand about it is, so it's such a big watershed. I mean, it's huge. I think it's like the sixth biggest river in the United States. Like it's big, it's mm-hmm. huge. Um, but it's super shallow. So what that means is like prop boats can't get on. So like there's literally not one person in a prop boat you will see. So it's either a canoe, kayak, raft, something like that, or a jet boat, which even in a jet boat, that river's treacherous dude i had my jet on it twice this year and it is you have to really like know what you're doing and even then like you don't know that river there's no way to know that river like you know your home rivers because it's so Mm -hmm. big Mm -hmm. um so the fish just don't get as abused as they do on some like like even like a saint lawrence or thousand islands area it's like there's just so much more access to that place. It's bigger, but like, there's just so much more access this because of the shallow and rocky nature of this river, it just doesn't get beat up. So it's, it's kind of like a kayak specialty river. Mm -hmm. Like you really have, you need a kayak to, to be on it. Um, and then, you know, it's literally, I'm trying to think of the way to describe it. It's like, imagine like your local Creek, that has like all the cool features, like, you know, it has the boulders and it has the grass and it has the lay downs and stuff. Take that times like a thousand. And that's I mean, the Susky is just like a huge Creek. I mean, that's really what it's mm. like. I mean, yeah. most places in the middle of the river, dude, you can just hop out of your kayak and stand. And it's like waist deep. Like it's just like super shallow. 
And now there are deep holes, like, you know, just like in the river, you, you know, you guys fish. It's like there are deep holes, but a lot of places you can get out and wade or whatever. This is how the Susky is. Just like there's tons and tons of rock everywhere. There's this, these grass islands that pop up everywhere in the summertime that create. And all this stuff is like you would look at any one of those things and be like, dude, there's got to be freaking fish on it. And like most of the time there is because <laughs> there's so many damn fish in that river. Like, and I was telling you guys, like the amount of I'll say 16 to 18 and a halves are just like, it's, it's like mind boggling how many there are in that river. Um, now this year was the first year I actually caught a lot of dinks, which was surprising. Hmm. Um, I didn't catch any during the tournament, but practicing, I caught a ton of dinks. Um, and I don't know if it's like whatever spawn happened two or three years ago was really good, but it, there's an influx of like small fish. When I've been there previously, like you just didn't catch anything under 16 inches. It's just like tons of 16 pluses. Now it's, it's definitely get more, more like small fish. Um, but yeah it's cool dude i mean you really just can't, and, and my words don't do it justice like mm -hmm. the first time you guys go there and you slide your kayak in the water you're gonna be like holy shit like, <laughs> i guarantee you that's gonna be the reply <laughs> yeah and i'll tell you where to go like your first time on the river you need to go somewhere that's like quintessential susquehanna because there there are certain places in the river where there's like a big island that cuts off half the river and it doesn't look as big until you see that opens up and there's like places where there aren't any grass islands or whatever. Like there's a couple stretches where I would say like, if you want to experience the Susquehanna, go to this area. Like if you go there for the first time, that's when you're going to be like, Holy shit. Um, but like there's, I mean, there's islands that are so big. If you get on the wrong side of them, like, you'll end up two miles downstream of your takeout because you can't get back. Wow. Oh, wow. So like you have to pay attention when you're float. If you're doing a point to point float, which I I've done less and less of that. Um, yeah. The last few times I've been there, I usually just single access it now. But if you do a point to point float, you have to know like, Oh, when I come up to this Island, like I have to be on the West side of it or East side of it because I'm taking out on the side. Cause you'll, mm -hmm. you'll just get, you won't be able to get back. Um, so it's cool though, man. I mean, place is awesome. Can't say good enough that's, things about it. That's nuts. Like a rock Island being two miles long. Well, it won't be rocks. It's like, these are like islands you could like camp on. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, like, I'm thinking of an Island like ours, but much bigger. Yeah. They're like legit islands where people have like cabins and shit on it. Like, Oh wow. Yeah. There's like big, like islands and some of them i think some of them are private and you can you can't you're not supposed to get on there or whatever and then some of them you can just like set up camp on them i mean but for every prime we call those primary islands or there's like trees and grass and stuff mm -hmm. and then there's like scrub islands where it's like grass for every primary pr primary island there's probably 20 grass islands so there's just like I mean, if you looked at an aerial view in the summertime, you'll just see like a bunch of just spots. And some of the grass islands are, you know, the same size you guys are used to. Maybe, you know, 15, 20 yards across. And some of them are like 50 yards across. It just mm -hmm. depends on which one you're fishing. Um, but yeah, they're cool, man. I mean, that place, like I said, words don't do it justice. Pictures don't do it justice. Videos don't do it justice. Only being there does it justice. So... And the crazy thing is, you don't even think it's the best river in the nation. <laughs> I did say that in the awards. Yeah, uh, no. It's the, yeah, it's not the best river I've ever been on. Um, that would, I mean, I said the Upper Mississippi, like, like which is I, completely crazy to me because I've seen a video on you guy on YouTube that floats the whole Mississippi from mm -hmm. all the way up to, to the top, all the way to the Gulf. And it looks like a creek in the upper part, like the very far upper part. Yeah, the part that we fish is probably, I would say it's like, it's where it starts to become like a real river. Mm -hmm. um, 
it so like I don't see the problems. I don't really know the GMR as as well as I I like I've driven over it and then I've seen like do you know the the part that the bridge that goes a um is it seventy or seventy four? Which one goes across? Yeah, seventy four goes out to towards you. Yeah, yeah so seventy four where it goes over that seventy four actually looks really good. Every time I drive over, I'm like, oh, that actually looks like yeah, that's near river. Cleves, Ohio, I think. Yeah, so is that representative of how big it is, or is it bigger than that? Yeah, like that's, that's yeah, about what that's, it's like. Yeah. Yeah, so the Upper Mississippi is probably like four of those where I'm at. Oh, okay. Where we fish it, so like it, it's pretty big. Like it has, like it's it's pretty. It's it's a legit like river. The Susquehanna take the Upper Mississippi, and it's like twenty of those. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's so big, like it's like That's insane. Crazy, but man. Yeah, the Upper Miss is the thing about that river, dude. Is there's probably more fish in the Susquehanna, like per square mile or whatever. But the fish in the Susquehanna actually like know what a lure is. Like you know, they've seen jackhammers, they've seen buzz baits. The fish up in the Upper Mississippi, dude, they're like, "Ooh, that's I've never seen that before. Let me go hit it." Like they yeah. <laughs> they don't ever see pressure, so. That's why it's crazy up there. They're just like those fish are completely unpressured, like completely. Yeah. Um, whereas like the Susquehanna, you catch a lot of fish. Like I caught a fish during the tournament that was had its mouth all ripped up and scars and stuff. Like you catch a lot of fish in the Susky that have clearly been caught before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Upper Mississippi, dude, those things are clean, bud. Like they am that ever felt a hook. They're like, what the hell when they're getting <laughs> towed up into your boat? So um but yeah so this kind of fish fight a lot harder too i was about to say yeah suskies fish are nasty dude they're (laughs) they're straight up nasty but the upper miss dude we call them super smallies there's this like strain of smallmouth up there that is like they're built like a bluegill like they have this like extra piece of meat on their back we call them super smallies and dude those things will straight up tow you like they're <laughs> they're wild but they're just not as like erratic like yeah. the, the smallmouth and the susky dude they're just like they're like i want off at all costs like they're just mm. going to like i mean they'll rip the lure out of their mouth if they can um yeah. <laughs> so yeah makes for a fun tournament fish because you get them on your boat and they're like you know trying to spike you and just like flop everywhere it's, <laughs> it's pretty tough to measure them but oh but yeah man. so what do you, you kind of talked a little bit in the behind the scenes and i don't want to bring up spots if you don't want to talk about them that's completely fine but kind of what was your thought process kind of going into it bait wise so bait wise uh you know I, i'm not, i'm not obviously going to talk about this spot in like great detail but like i'll talk about it a little bit i mean we're we were like early October. So it was kind of a weird time. Like it was like fall, but it was like just starting to get cold. I think they had went through a cold spell up in Pennsylvania and then it got warm again. It was like 85 degrees the first mm-hmm. the two days of practice. And then we had a cold front move in, which I was kind of hoping that the cold front would get those fish kind of kicked into gear. But I don't ever think they were really in fall mode because I never did see any like wolf packs. Like yeah, when I was up there, they were they were more in like a summer pattern than they were anything. But what, and I've said this on a couple other other podcasts, but this is what I think. I found some fish that were like the first movers of fall, like the very first fish that were like kind of moving into those areas where they were feeding, that were adjacent to a wintering hole. And they were like starting to like fatten up for, mm-hmm. for uh, winter. And I don't know if you saw pictures of some of my fish on the board, but they were freaking stacked, dude. I mean, mm-hmm. they were like super, super thick fish. And usually, if you think about how fish sort of do things in in the course of a season, the f- big alpha fish are usually the first ones to move. So mm-hmm. whether that be like the fish their first ones in the wintering hole or the first ones to spawn or the first ones to go into pre-spawn or like 
a lot of times people will say like, well, you know, if you want to catch a big pre-spawn fish, you want to be fishing like the last week of April. You know, it's like, well, personally, if you want to catch big pre-spawn fish, like fish like early March, because that's when the, like the big, big fish are really feeding up for the, the spawn. So same thing, you know, fish that move on beds, the biggest fish will move on beds first. And, you know, by the time you find fish on beds everywhere, it's too late. Yeah. Like, if you want to find like the big, big fish on the beds, you, you have to like know where they spawn and like go look for them like about two weeks earlier than the rest of the fish are spawning. Yep. Well, same thing with the fall, right? The big fish kind of start doing that, doing that first. And I think this, that's what I had found as an area where they had basically were starting to stage for a fall and they were feeding and the spot that I was in, like they would, these fish would just move in and out of it. Like mm -hmm. they would move in, you know, you'd catch some when they move in and then they would move out. And I was a not dude. I don't know if you heard me say it, but I caught, I only caught 17 fish in two days. Like I did not catch very many fish. Like, and so it was really nerve wracking for me because I knew that it was like a very, um, slim margin for error. Like if I lost one big one, dude, it was going to be trouble. It was going to spell trouble for me. Yeah. And I just, like I was telling you guys before, like I, I just had everything kind of fall into place. I didn't really, I broke off one big one. It's the only fish I really lost the whole two days of practice. Um, and I was throwing big freaking ginormous baits, mm -hmm. like swim, swim bait type of things. I actually have one, um, this, I was throwing that, for a lot of it. Talking um, Matt's language now. Yep. Mag slow. Yeah. I say yeah, it's I, a mag slow. A lot of people don't know about the mag slow. I don't know about it. What what's different from the mag draft? I think it's longer and it the 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 tail's a little like less stiff. It's it's yeah. like a longer. The idea behind it is that you can slow roll it. Yep. So like oh, I'm gonna have to get you one. I don't yeah. like the mag draft. It I, I don't know. Just not the mag draft is one of those baits that you have to like. There's people all the time who are like, "Oh, I can throw a mag draft any way I want," and you can, I guess, if you really like dial it in and know what to do. But it's one of those baits that has a very specific cadence when you're throwing it. Like you throw it, if you burn it back too fast, it will blow out every time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you go too slow, it'll want to just nose down, and it won't. You won't get any action with the mag uh, slow. You can creep it, and that tail will kick like yeah. violently, almost. Like you can nip the bottom and that tail will stick up and just blow back and forth. Huh? Yeah. And that, so. that's what I was doing. I was throwing stuff really slow. That was day one. Um, when I was, I, I kind of, I caught my early fish on a bull shad and I, I broke it off on a huge musky devastated me, dude. Only bull shad I had. I was like, <laughs> Oh my God. I can't believe I just lost. What size bull shad? Six inch. Nice. Uh, yeah, and I don't throw swim baits, dude. It's just not my – I'm not a swim bait guy. Like, Damn. I had one little box of swim baits, you know, that I always keep just in case, and this was the just in case um, because everybody was talking about swim baits, dude. You know, you hear the chatter about what they're catching on. I kept hearing mags, mag drafts, glides. I was hearing – and I was like, well, you know, I the bull shad is kind of a proven, like, fish catcher. Like, I know yeah. just from – you know, being on swim bait universe and all that, like that's like if if guys were, are like, where should I start with swim baits? It's like one of the first swim baits guys will recommend. Like, yep. they're not like crazy expensive. They're they're well built and they catch fish. So I was like, yeah, I'll throw this and I I did get on, onto him and then I hooked that musky dude that was like God knows how big. I mean, it was humongous. Jumped completely out of the water three times. Um, <sighs> And I'm on this inflatable trying to like pedal backwards onto this island so I can like drag this fish up on the island because I was like, there's no way I can net this thing. And it just cuts my line. Uh, third time it jumped, which, you know, I was like the biggest thing I was like, dude, I just lost my winning bait. Like yeah. I, I, I had four. I had four fish at that point and I needed a fifth one. And I went two hours without a bite after that. Um, Dang. I was sweating it, brother. I was like, I, 
was like, I'm, I cannot believe I'm going to go home catching four giants and like not being able to get a fifth fish. And then I, I went back to over to the bank and I cut, tied, I was throwing a S waiver, like a big S waiver. I just wasn't feeling it. Like I just yeah, I didn't look right. I didn't have the color I wanted it just, I just like didn't, wasn't feeling it. And then I went over to the bank and I was digging through that box. I was like, Ooh, I'll throw this. It's like, this looks good. And I tied that mags little one and it was like three casts later, dude. I had a, I had, they had like a 19 and a half smash it. That's and awesome. And then I, yeah, upgraded like two or three more times. Um, but yeah, big bait fish presentations. That was the ticket. And if you talk to a lot of guys in that tournament, they said the same thing. Like they were throwing mag drafts, you know, they're throwing like big swims, uh, mm -hmm. which is cool. It's not my, that is not my game, dude. Like I so, had to get at, I had to get out of my comfort zone for that one. I was so. I was gonna ask that like not being uh like confident with those baits like how'd you overcome that? I just like, was catching fish on them, dude. I mean, yeah. so it was I, like an instant success when you tied it on. No, I wouldn't say that. But I was being very like I was that whole tournament like because I Brad I know you like had messaged me before this podcast and was like, Hey, I don't want you to like go through the whole tournament. I want you to talk more yeah. like the mental aspects or whatever. This tournament taught me more about myself than any tournament I've ever fished. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I, when I fish a tournament, I normally am like kind of my thing. And this, this, it's just how I, how I do it. I like to always try to find a little bit different of, a strategy than what everybody else is doing like i don't want to be the guy like a lot of guys will like try to figure out what everybody's catching fish on and do the same thing like to yeah. me that's like a losing strategy because then it's like you're just doing the same thing as everybody else like who's to yeah. say you're gonna do it better than the next person so i always try to find the little hack to like my fishing i'm like i'm gonna try to do something just a little bit different than everybody else and sometimes at home that's like a good example is like all like weight upstream like everybody's floating downstream everybody's doing these like point to point floats like i'll find a little section of skinny water and i'll like weight upstream and my thought process is like it's low and clear i'm not going to disturb the fish i'm going to mm -hmm. sneak up on fish because i'm down coming from downstream mm -hmm. another thing is like I'm really good at throwing a weightless fluke. So it's like, that's kind of like an in-between of finesse and a power fishing kind of technique. So I'm like, all like, you know, fish, nobody else is going to be doing it like I'm doing it. You know, sometimes that's fishing a, a different area that maybe is overlooked. And nobody's fished it before. Well, this tournament, I was like, I'd found this fish and I'm like, I'm going to be the guy that stays on the spot and just absolutely like milks it for everything it's worth. And I'm not going to be running around finding fish everywhere. I'm going to stay on the spot because I know that there's some big fish here. And I was like thinking because I never I never did fish this spot first light before the tournament. And like I was kind of thinking like I'm going to get there and I'll get five early and then I'll kind of upgrade throughout the day. Well, I get there day one and I did have the spots on myself for a while, but I did not catch a fish for like two hours. Mm. So I was like, I'm stuck here because I couldn't, there wasn't really any good areas around there. The downstream, it was like three miles to the next like good area. My car's two miles upstream. So like, I really like didn't have a choice once I mm -hmm. chose to do that. So I would like fish this area. I'd fish through it like three times with the presentation. If I didn't get a bite, I'd cut off, tie something or grab another rod or whatever, mm. fish it three more times through with a different. And I just kept doing that. And eventually I got to a swim bait. I didn't pick up that swim bait first thing. It was just like part of my rotation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got to where I grabbed that swim bait rod and I went through it like twice. And then the, I was like, boom boom i caught like two in a row and i was like okay i'm on to something here and then i go through another time boom another one another time boom catch another one and i'm like okay and this is where i fished a chatterbait a fluke 
a crankbait, a Ned rig. Like I ain't got any bites on anything. And all of a sudden I'm like that bullshit. like boom, 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 boom. And then That's I break crazy. it all. <laughs> that was what was so, so bad. It, yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy I know. shit. <laughs> I've seen Matt do the same thing where he just runs through the rotation. He picks up the swim bait and then he catches one with it. And I'm just like, oh. and yeah, I actually I mean, told Chris Yalk this fish and Sunday, it, those big to get your first fish on a swim bait that big, you just got to lock it in your hands all day long and not change. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, it's getting into swim bait fishing. I mean, cause everyone knows I throw big baits all the time and even when I shouldn't, I still want to catch a fish on it. And I'll do like Brad said, I'll just roll through the rotation. I'll, I, I'll have the fisherman in my head say, you got to th throw the Ned rig, you got to throw crankbait, jerkbait. I love jerkbaits. You got to throw the jerkbait. Oh, they're not hitting that. You got to throw a jig, not hitting that jackhammer, not hitting that. And then I just go back to, well, I'm going to throw a swim bait because that's the last thing. And then two casts, 16 comes. And I said, oh, that's crazy. All right. And then, and then I'll fish the rest of the day. The one day me and Brad out there, I don't think I put the swim bait down. I may have changed the size of the swim bait. Like I'd throw it, get one, and then. 15 casts later, get something else and then not get anything for half hour and be like, okay, well, if they're hitting the swim bait, so instead of throwing this big seven inch swim bait, I'll throw like the micro version of the same bait, mm -hmm. throw that out there. And then they start hitting that and then they stop hitting that. And then you go back and I mean, Brad's right. Once you get a fish on the swim bait, when they're not biting anything else, I mean, you just stay on that bait. That sucks. Yeah. You lost that book or that, uh, Chad, though. <laughs> that sucks so bad. Yeah. I need to message him. Like, bro, I gave you a lot of pub for this and me, <laughs> send me a new bullshit. Um, but I mean, I'm not, I'm definitely not going to claim I'm like that guy with swim bait. It's like, I, yeah. I, I, I just like catching fish. Like I, I, and I'm, I consider myself like a trophy smallmouth guy. It's like, a, but these swim baits, can't argue, dude. You, they do catch big fish. I mean, absolutely. Now, oh, you get a lot of big fish that follow them and don't mm -hmm. actually eat them, and it's like a tease. But like, you're not going to catch very many dinks on that mag slow, dude. Like, you're just not going to. I mean, you'll catch, you know, now and again, you'll catch a 14 inch or something. But like, it, this generally speaking is pretty big big fish that eat that bait. Um, so I, I, I was, I, I finally got one to eat that mag slow and got my fifth fish. And then the second day, dude, it started it, the whole river muddied up. Um, that's wild like it, too. I heard you say yeah. that on another podcast. Yeah. I went from like, which I knew that the, the river like tripled in flow and I knew it was like, here we go. Like I have to produce today because, if I don't, everybody's going to be catching them out there. Mm -hmm. And they were, dude, I mean, they were smashing them out on the main river. Drew said he caught like 80 fish over 18 inches or something crazy Holy like crap. that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but like, that's what you'll do on the Susky. Like, yeah. you will do that. And I caught nine fish on Sunday, but like, they were the right nine mm -hmm. fish. Like, they were just the big ones. And it was because of that area I was in. Like, that, like, I was taking it back to what I said before, that was a fall area where these big fish had moved into and they were feeding on bait there. And that was like, there weren't small fish. They were all ginormous. There just wasn't a lot of them. So yeah, broke off a 20 the first fish of the day on the second, uh. second day <laughs> jumped in right next to my kayak with my jackhammer, just flopping out of its mouth. Um, was a giant uh but i i smashed another 20 about three casts later so uh, that's crazy yeah yeah so it was cool though dude it was a neat neat experience uh i did not fish the susky eat like i would never go do that if it wasn't a tournament mm -hmm. like there's no chance in hell i would ever sit on a spot all day mm -hmm. for two let alone two days like that river so cool. There's so many cool things to explore and do and catch fish in different places. Like that is the last thing I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but you know, I went there to fish a tournament, you know? So it was a business trip, bud. So heck uh, yeah, dude. So right yeah. on. Yeah, you, exactly. you, you mentioned the rising river and like fish going nuts. I I've always told people that the best time to, hit the river is when it's rising like that. And it's not to not where it's like super muddy, but not where it's super clean. It's just like 
I don't know, maybe a foot, foot or less of yeah, visibility. I was about to say, it's and right at the beginning of it. Just yeah. like right when that starts to get like, you see all those pictures, uh, the GMR will never do this. It'll never be this cool to look at because it's usually always trash. But yeah. Right when it's like you see those pictures where you see like the real muddy river come in and the clear water river come in that separation, yep. it's the same thing. Just flip it this way to where you can like if you can get sometimes get pockets, you can still see the bottom and then the rest of it's just milky, like six to ten inches. It's a perfect time. Well, that's a, that's oh, kind of that's a good analogy. It's the Suskies. The Suskies wild because it's so big. Like every time I've ever seen it muddy, like it's only like one side of it. Like, so you can go over on one side of it and it's like chocolate milk and then go on the other side and it's like three foot of visibility. Like it's, it's crazy. It's it's like a completely different river on both sides. Yeah. I'm sure there are times when it all gets blown out. I've just never been there when it's all been blown out. I've always been there when like one side's been dirty, one side's been clean because the West branch, which comes from New York, that is like farmland and stuff. It goes through, it like when it rains up there it's always mud so like that side of the river if it's muddy that the river will be muddy the other side comes from like mountainous areas so that river even when it rains it doesn't ever get like super dirty um yeah. so the one side that for the far side of the river i guess be the east side of the river is like always dirty when i'm there the west side of the river is always clean um I mean, I've seen it where both sides have been clean, obviously, but um, it's a crazy. They what, what happens? They actually deflated that freaking dam when on on tournament day, they brought it down. So like That's... they brought down, yeah, that dam, and it like all that water that was trapped above the dam just like washed downstream, and that's what caused it to like rise and flow. Yeah, it was basically like the same thing as like a hydroelectric dam. Them just opening up the gates. I mean, they just they all that water came downstream. So do they not know that there's a tournament going on there like that could they didn't give a shit. (laughs) They don't care. That that, that could be potentially dangerous for people that, you know. Yeah. Like me, where I can barely get back to my car. (laughs) Like I'm in this freaking I-11. I was like, I was like going after day one. I, you know, I was had a good day i was knew i was in the lead and i was pumped you know so i'm like get back in my kayak i'm like going upstream I'm like jesus christ this is i was like i'm not going anywhere I was like what is going on my legs are burning i was about to and say like, legs burning yeah dude chugging. i'm like <laughs> yeah i'm like pedaling real hard i'm like what is going on i looked at the gauge i'm like my goodness i was like this flows like twice what it was this morning and i get you could see up like the dam like when i drove by the dam like you could see like they had let that whole thing down and it was like dude it was moving up there like it was yeah it was a ton of water i was like well no wonder um but it muddied it up uh quite a bit Um, oh yeah so that second day i i threw a jackhammer all day i caught every one of my fish on a black and red jackhammer so ooh, black um, black and red yep this one right here. Yeah. Oh, that's I've, uh uh I know what that that is. Uh uh crap. I love that see, color. See I, how I caught, beat up it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> it looks like hey, Matt Black Blade. Yeah, yeah. Black Blade. Uh, yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> For the <laughs> longest like- time, I didn't know I didn't I didn't pay attention to Jack. Like I've been throwing jackhammers for like years. I never paid attention to them. I had a black and blue and a brown one. I was like this has a black blade. And Brad's like, yeah, they always do. It's like, no, they don't. He's like, yes, they do. And I got my box out and I was looking, I was like, I'm an idiot. I was like, well, after like two hours on the river, it's like silver. So like, I probably just never paid attention. Yeah. Jackhammers on the Susky have like a reputation, like Whopper ploppers and Jackhammers. That's like the two baits where if you like talk to guys who just like Jake Harshman. Yeah. Yeah. They, they fish, like they fish it. You don't necessarily like high end guys like Jake, but like just guys who fish it irregularly. That's like the two baits you'll hear a lot of, which personally I'm usually like not trying to fish those baits because I'm like, everybody's throwing them. But in that circumstance, when it muddied up, I was like, yeah, I mean, you got to throw one. I mean, because I was here, I was there like a month and a half before that tournament. 
out of my jet and we slayed them on jackhammers, dude. It is the best jackhammer by by far I'd ever been on. And I was kind of like, well, okay, well, I know <laughs> when it's muddy, this is what you throw. I mean, yep. me and my dad floated down this uh, bank. Uh, it was one evening. We started at 3.30, ran up to this bank in the jet, and then just like floated down and used the trail motor to kind of control the flow. And it was it was high. It came way up. It was like a foot and a half higher than what I had experienced during the tournament. And we had 101 inches in three hours. Wow. So, they just absolutely crushed them. <laughs> All on jackhammers, dude. And they were, they were eating it so like violently, like mm – -hmm. They were like you had to like reach your hand down in their mouth to get it out. Like it was like just lodged down in there. That is the, the best bite, dude. I don't care what anybody says. The jackhammer bite and smallmouth is oh, it's my favorite. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My dad had never caught a chatterbait fish. Oh. I don't even know if he'd thrown a chatterbait. And I was like, I got up there and I was like, he was trying to throw a spinnerbait or something. I was like, Dad, just I was like, trust me, dude. Throw, throw. He's like, I I don't know if I have any. I was like. I know you're gonna think I'm stupid, but you need to throw a jackhammer. I was like, I got plenty of them. I gave him a jackhammer. He's like, Why do I need to throw a jackhammer? He's like, What's different about it? I was like, Dude, just trust me. <laughs> just throw, tie this on, yeah. throw it. And dude, he caught. He ended up catching a legit twenty-one. Um, Holy crap! Like we both caught twenty-ones on that in that three-hour span. I caught a twenty, a twenty and a half, a twenty-one. He caught a twenty-one, and then we had like four other ones that were like almost twenty, like nineteen and three quarters like big 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 fish um it was wild yeah crazy time on the susky so oh. uh andrew hayes caught a 21 on the gmr this i saw weekend. that dude man yeah big old a tank of a fish too you guys i will say this brad i always see your posts because you always tag us and i repost them and all that like your guys fish are like pretty big in the gmr like the big yeah. ones and i don't mean like like link i just mean the ones when you catch a nice fish like, thick. like they're stacked yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they're yeah, not they like shoulders yeah they're not like skinny because like we get a, a lot of fish especially where like on the south side of white river like you just get a lot of fish that are just like yeah it's a 20 but it's like eh. you know it's like uh yeah. it's like they're a like long skinny bullets yeah especially in the summertime like your guys yeah. fish kayak are tournament eating. fish is what it is yeah i know yeah like your guys fish are like if you saw those 220 i caught 220s in one morning with necrelli um whenever we went out on my jet hey, i remember and, that yeah and like those fish were like shameful like i had to like <laughs> I, I had to like like do the angle just right to make them look respectable <laughs> move their stomach up a little bit just make them look a little fatter <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah i will say about our fit like even this last trip when we went out the dark horse boys i i caught a 14 13 or 14 i don't know it was, it was short fish but he was just footballed yeah. i was like I, I even picked it up and i was like this fish is just weirdly fat and then brad you caught like a dink and it was like a softball yeah like this is that's stupid yeah. like <laughs> well our our river here is full of crawls like these crawls are huge. Like yes. they're probably four inch average crawls. I've seen them That's as why. big as like six inch crawls. Yep. And they're, they're massive. I'm like, what in the world? I've never seen them this big. It's all yep. the heroin, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like <laughs> mutated. dude. Yeah. Like it crawls just out of the bank. They see a, a discarded needle and they go over there and just like lick it and just grow <laughs> through. That, it not. We have a ton of bait fish in this river too. Uh, I don't know yeah. what kind of bait fish they are, but there's a bunch yeah, of them. Yeah, I don't know. You guys definitely have healthy fish. like, And that's the thing. If you catch like a 20, like especially if you don't catch them very often, like it sucks when they're all like, you know, super skinny. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it's a 20, but it's like, dude, when you get one that's like stacked, it's like, oh, yeah, like this is yeah. going to look good in pictures. Like that one Andrew caught was freaking big. Like it was a big fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. So. Matt's 20, he caught his first 20 was a massive one. It's just giant. Yeah, I saw it, dude. It's freaking I was, was waiting on to order that shirt, but did you get it? Did you get your shirt? No, I haven't ordered it yet because when I tried to right before oh. I went on vacation, it was out of stock. I couldn't. Oh well, it. certain colors are. Did you have a specific oh, color? I just, didn't, I just didn't pay attention to the color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whenever you uh 
whenever you get an order, let me know. So, um, I'm gonna, but gonna yeah, order. yeah. Um, I'm but like, uh, you know, as, as far as the GMR goes, I, I need to go fish it because I, there's too many of you guys that I like know that would take me out on it. And I, you know, oh, yeah. like, what two and a half hours away, like I need to just go. Do it, it'd stuff. be kind of cool to see like how you dissect it compared to like how we we do yeah like because drew drew has said the same thing i need to come down there i'm like i, I would love to see how you fish this river because i guarantee it both of you guys will fish it completely different than i i do you'll probably find stuff that yeah. i don't i don't know, you know dude we'll see <laughs> i might come up there and suck it up but <laughs> well, um... that happens a lot to me too so I did. I did go out with Jeff a little um, the day before the tournament. We went way up on the North Branch um, and fished. Uh, like it was like not the Susky. It's like where it split, so it's like way smaller. It's still big, but way smaller. And uh, it was cool. Like he'd ne- he'd been up there one other time, but it was like a long time ago. So it was cool to see him kind of dissect that river and like figure out like and i was doing the same thing i'd never been up there so it was kind of neat to watch him you know kind of do his thing on there i did end up out fishing him though so jeff if you're listening bud sorry i had to smoke (laughs) you uh i'm starting they got on that nose hook fluke dude like if they get on that bud watch out like that's i'm gonna i'm gonna eat if they're uh if they're on that if they're not it might take me a little bit longer to figure them out. But. Uh, Fluke has been like e- ever since like I started listening to Smalley talk. That's been like locked in my hand for the yep. last couple years. Like such a versatile presentation, dude. I mean, and they do they just go. they hammer it. it. It's crazy. They hammer it and then just pull drag. Yeah, it's so, so much, much fun. fun. Yeah, it's so much fun throwing on this. I throw it on a spinning reel like a. I used to throw on a medium light. I started throwing on a medium because I just lost too many fish from fighting them for too long um yeah. i could but imagine I, uh, throwing, a, throwing a fluke on a medium light yeah i used to like throw it on seven foot medium light spinning around it just you would like during tournaments like i would lose a lot of fish because they just be on it for so long they'd wear that hole in mm-hmm. their mouth and the hook yeah. would just come out whenever they jump or whatever so i went over to a seven foot medium but i still like a spinning rod because i can skip it really well and mm-hmm put it in places that I can't as well with my bait caster, but uh, that Calcutta is pretty sick though, Matt. I like that. It's Dude, pretty, I'm so excited. Nasty. I just been staring at it like the whole show. I know. I see like, you I'm, I down. Got, <laughs> Dude, I, I, do got, I got some, sh- I know, dude, I got some shooter. So I've never had of all the stuff I've ever had. I had an old Calcutta, like a 400. It used to be my 300. It used to be my swim bait reel. And I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. But I beat the crap out of it, and then I left it in North Carolina when I moved. And the people that I, me and my wife, our landlords, never got back with me. Scrubs. Mm. So, yeah, mm. hate them. But anyway, so this is the first one I had in a while. Dude, I'm just pumped. I'm so excited to throw this thing. I, I actually, and uh, I sold it, but I had it at Calcutta 100, not a freaking whatever Conquest or whatever the hell that is. But... Uh, yeah. <laughs> It was like the old, like, it was round. Because when you said Calcutta, I saw it on the box. I was like, dude, that's a round reel. Because I had the 100, like, old one. Like, I don't mm-hmm. even remember where I, I bought it off a of buddy of mine or something. And it was, like, way back in the day, like, you know, like, 2005 or something. Um, mm-hmm. And I ended up selling it. But those 100 re- reels are sick. I've kind of settled on the 150. It's kind of what I, like, I have a, I have 170. Which is really cool. I really like the set. I have a seventy XG Corrado, and then I just Your bought right hander. Yep, <laughs> yep. And then I have. Uh, um, I'm left handed. I'm actually left handed, so I cast left handed and I reel right, so I don't switch hands. Um, yeah, I'm but I'm righty and I I use righties. Okay. <laughs> I cast I cast yeah. right handed and just immediately go down to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my dad just taught me to fish that way from the get go, or else I would probably do it left with everything. But um, yeah, I just bought a right before that trip. Actually, the the reel I start caught all my fish on. I bought a one fifty Cronarch, and I like it a lot. It's a pretty sick reel. Cronarchs are sick. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's basically it was, a lighter it... Bantam is what I usually tell yep. people. Yeah, I was going to get a Bantam. They had a Bantam there, and then I, I felt the two, and I was like, oh, that Bantam's pretty heavy. I I just like lighter stuff, just if yeah. I'm throwing it, throwing the heavy, you know, like a bait all day, like the lighter, the lighter the equipment, I feel like the better. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, I freaking, um, I threw, it was a brand new rod and reel I caught all, almost all those fish on. Um, so That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah so one, one last thing before we end this how, how does it feel to break the record for be- most inches in two days uh pretty cool man i mean it, it's like this whole thing that like i'm kind of it's i'm sure that it'll wear off but like i'll just be like in the middle of the day like you know sucky work day you're tired just like doing some shit you don't want to do and then you're just like dude i just want a freaking bass master tournament two weeks ago yeah. <laughs> like it just like you know makes you smile like i said i'm sure yeah. it'll wear off but even like every time i come in my office i'll see that trophy and you know it's just a it's a cool thing i mean it's weird breaking the record like i didn't really feel i think i mean it's just because i didn't catch a ton of fish like i just didn't feel like fishing was like oh my gosh it's off the hook it's just every one i caught was big like yeah yeah and it was it was weird like when i was fishing every time i i got a bite i was like i just knew it was a big fish like it was like no mistaking it they were absolutely crushing like when they did eat they were just absolutely crushing it that bullshad was like every one of them was like all the way in its mouth both treble hooks like jammed in its jaw like they were absolutely just crushing it and to be honest, oh, dude, amazing. I don't think I've ever caught a fish on a mag draft or a mag slow before this. And that's crazy. I tied it on. I'd thrown it before. I just I may have caught some small fish on this mag slow, but I I remember thinking like I don't I don't know if I've ever caught a fish on like a single treble like bait like this. Like I hope it's and it, luckily it, it, they held on because I I make some good hooks. <laughs> Yeah, I was kind of like, I'm going to trust this lure, but you know, when it was like something you're just not that familiar with, you don't know like the hook set and you're just not quite mm-hmm. sure, you know, but I had a, I just got a rod in the mail. I um, bought a St. Croix as a legend tournament. Um, so it was a 7-2 medium moderate fast. So it was like a moderate fast tip and mm-hmm. it's like they're, it's called their like carbon cranker um so it's kind of like a crankbait rod um and i was like that those moderate kind of action rods you don't really like jack the hook like you just kind of like load up on the fish yeah just load the hook or load the bait yeah which to me like a swim bait that's like what you probably typically would throw something like that you're not wanting to like snap you know that that bait out of their mouth um, yeah, and it did well, man. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. I still do. I mean, Brad's Brad's watched me because he's even said it. Like, I'll, dude. I, so it was. Uh, it's when I first got my BFS rod, and I was throwing a Ned rig on it, and I was just throwing it, and I was just sitting there, and I felt the bite, and I was like, I'm gonna just let him eat it. And I, in my head, I was like, I'm not going to set the hook. And I felt him just head shake a little bit. I was like, oh, no, wham. And I just <laughs> yeeted this fish backwards. And I was like, oh, man, I probably just cracked this blank. <laughs> and I look, and it's fine. And then I'll be going, I'll throw a swim bait, and I'm th- reeling it. And I get the hit, and it's just, like, I just forget. I just reel down for a second and then, like, fly back into my seat. And, like, that 19 and a half, I did, I, <laughs> I set that hook, and I watched the fish get pulled is how hard I set that hook in a 19 inch fish <laughs> and in my head i was like oh no i screwed my well, luckily he ate the whole thing so like i got two it was, it was a danger just getting out of his mouth there was yeah front treble hook had two in it the back treble hook had two in the top like it was oh it sucked oh, it i sucked. hey i'm fine with that it's better than them getting more, just the back treble and jumping and oh, shaking yeah. it so using all that weight to throw it yeah yeah, that's what a fluke, a nose hook fluke, you kind of have to, it's more of like a finesse set. Like, you don't, yeah. you don't want to just like, it's not like a Ned rig where you're just like snapping that hook up. Like, yeah, you want to like, 
I mean, I feel like a nose hook fluky. Like you, you do need a little bit of a hook set, but you don't want like you don't want that like real hard hook set. So it's kind of like, like a wacky rig. Yeah, it's yeah, like in between. Like you want to just... reel up and kind of give it some. Yeah, give it some a little bit of lift, but not like you don't want a, a snap. But you also don't want just want it like a crankbait where you just kind of just keep reeling. Um, but like a spinnerbait, like if I said like I'm a spinnerbait dude, I'm like I'm. I'm freaking trying to just jack that fish's jaw, dude. Like I'm, yep. yeah. Same thing with the chatterbait, dude. I'm like, if it hits, dude, I'm freaking giving it everything I got. Yep. Um, but, but yeah, dude, it was a, it was a fun time, man. I, like I said, I, I appreciate you guys supporting me, cheering me on during that. It was, oh yeah, uh, super, super cool to have have people kind of seeing that all go down. So. Heck yeah. Yeah, I was pumped for you. That was awesome. And where we were talking about, we were floating that Sunday, and we were me and Brad. Oh, kept yeah, shrink a stone first. And then 20, 30 <laughs> minutes go by. Brad be like, shrink a stone first. And I'd be like, he's gonna win it, dude. This is gonna be insane. <laughs> yeah, I I I didn't know, dude. You know, you never know until it happens. But I had ninety seven and three quarters that second day. It was freaking ridiculous. That's um, an awesome day. Like yeah, that. your boy uh, uh, Steve Baker stayed in my house. Yeah, um, he, he's on our uh, fishing team for Loveland. Yep. Yeah, I didn't re- I didn't make the connection there because I knew he's from Ohio, but I was like not making the connection at first because he had said he, he came up to me and was like, "Oh, dude, listen to Smalley talk." And I was like, and then I think I saw you post something on the Smalley Games page or something that like yeah comment he was he was like an early leader or something like that. So yep. I was like, "Oh, Brad must know him." So yep. yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude, dude. We had a good time. So yeah, he's cool. Yeah, he's good people. Yeah, but, for sure. All right, dude. Oh, well, we appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. So hey, man, always make time for you boys. So <laughs> hey, thanks, thanks for coming down. Got a stool to hang out with us, lowly. <laughs> That's but, not uh... true. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys. Um, yeah, I, we've said it. We keep saying it. Uh, we need to get together and fish, but for real, we need to get together and fish. So yes. Yeah, I yes. would, this this season's come to an end, but like honestly, if you guys want to, the best time to come fish with me, dude, is the winter time. So I'll fish in the winter time. I don't even care. Yeah. I've got dry. Season. Well, that I'm telling you, you come fish with me in the winter time. It's it'll be a good. It'll be the best trip of the year for you. Like I'm a I'm a not the best winter fisherman. I you know I can catch some fish, but. I could still learn some stuff about it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. We got our Chris and I have. We called our winter program, but we. It's getting. It's progressively got better and better and better the last like five years, like to the point where I don't know how many twenties we caught this this winter. I mean, it was like an obscene amount. I think we caught like eight or nine this uh, winter. Ooh. So, what, yeah. what's his what's his twenty number at for the year? Uh, we were just talking about that yesterday. I think he's at twelve. I passed him up. I got fifteen. So <laughs> yeah, you went to the Susky uh, though. It His goal was twenty, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I was gonna say I just now I gotta do the ultimate and get his goal and have him not <laughs> hit it. <laughs> I need five more before the end of the year. But yeah, we have this uh, one particular. It's river. It's one of the bigger rivers we fish um, that we can put jets on. And you really need jet a jet to fish it because it's to get to those spots. They're like, like one of them's pretty close to the ramp, but then you have like, there's one that's like ten miles downstream, and like if with the kayak you wouldn't be able to fish those all in one day. So with the jet, you just like run, you know, run down fish one. Uh, but if you guys come, dude, it'd be perfect. Get both you guys on the jet um find a day when it's like not super cold and we'll freaking smoke them dude i'm down that sounds fun bring your ned rig ned rig rods that's all you need so <laughs> that's all i ever bring in the winter that yeah. jerk bait yeah they'll hit jerk baits yeah occasionally I, I i hooked a giant on a spinner bait slower on a spinner bait last year but it broke off um mm jumped it jumped like 10 times next to our boat with my spinner bait in its mouth we were trying to net it and everything it was shameful but um <laughs> but yeah uh but yeah if you guys want to come to indy i'll 
I'll hook you up with with a good winter trip. So I'm down. All right. All right, Matt. You got anything else? Go Browns. Yeah. Browns suck. What's the Deshaun Watson news? Is he is he gonna be back next week? He's a rapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He just likes to get those happy ending massages, dude. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, he just he pays for it. That. It's fine. But uh, no, I, in all honesty, I Deshaun, I don't even, I, I, I don't even care because that shoulder injury, unless it's way worse than he's saying it is. But if it's like what he's saying, and everyone out there is like, he's just being a girl about it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he comes back and plays well. Cool. But I'm fine with some PJ Walker. Just don't throw any more interceptions and, you know, give the ball to Kareem. Kareem looked really good. I'm just saying. He looked good. They, they, beat, the, forward. they beat the Niners. They beat the Niners because uh, they, they superimposed that image, everyone, by the way, at the very end. Denzel Ward got a pinky on that ball that made it move. Oh. It's all Denzel Ward. On the, and their uh, kicker sucks. Goal? Yeah, the game-winning yeah. field goal from like 34 yards away. That kicker just sucked. But yeah. Ward got a little pinky on it to push it that extra hey, seven inches. I will oh, always root for Br- the Browns because the Browns have had the most unforgiving run of professional football of any <laughs> maybe the professional the sports. <laughs> yeah, I I don't. Yeah, probably. But you guys had, got had a championship with the Cavs not too long ago, so. Yeah. Oh, this is the only like, Ohio team, other than the Buckeyes. This is the only Ohio team I like. I'm a Yankees fan. Okay, a Lakers well, Buckeyes, fan. same difference. Well, yeah. Dude, you guys are literally in the championship every year. But like <laughs> the Lions, I feel like have a gripe because the Lions have sucked so bad. And the Pistons, I guess the Pistons won, like, but that's been you know 15 years ago. I'm about to say that's been yeah. 15, 16 years. Ben since Wallace yeah. or Sheed Wallace or uh, God, I miss Bane of Wallace my play. existence, dude. A Pacers fan, dude. They ruined the Pacers <laughs> franchise for 25 years. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that team was, was so good, good, though. Chauncey Billups. They were good. Dude, ben Wallace. Pacers were better dog. that year. Pacers were better that year. Jermaine, Ron Artest, Reggie Miller. Dude, oh, yeah. Snack, dude. <laughs> dude, Malice in the Palace. Oh, that was wild. Yeah. That was awesome. I was watching that game on TV. I was like, oh, my gosh, dude, he just knocked that guy out. <laughs> I, I turned it on. I wasn't watching it at the time. It was just like a random regular season game. It wasn't yeah. like yeah. – But I, I remember getting a call about that, and I was like, I was like, dude, you turned the – And then I like turned it on, and Jermaine and he was like running up in the stands, swinging at people. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I got the news clipping of that still because I thought it was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it was wild. It was cool uh, until I realized it set back the Pacers franchise for 20 years. So Yeah, yeah well, um, you know. What are you going to do? But uh, we got Tyrese Halliburton now, so, you know, we're, uh, we're going to be winning here soon. So There you so, go. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yep. All right, dude. Don't want to take up any more of your time, so thanks for coming on. Congrats on the win. That was awesome. And Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. It's always fun to come on. I'll come on anytime you want. So Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.